Moving on to the Grandmaster for Chapter 5, Section 4. Question says, a 5 by 5 square has an area equal to x squared minus 6x plus 9 solve for x. So we're told that the area of our square is this jumbled mess here, and we need to find out what x is. But we are told, we are given the dimensions of the square. It's a 5 by 5, whatever units. Maybe they're inches, meters, we don't know. So what can we do to actually figure out what x is? Well, I recommend you draw a picture. Okay, so I'm just going to draw a square here, something like this. Not to be perfect, but there we go. And I'm going to label it. Okay, if it's a 5 by 5 square, that means this is 5, here I'll keep the decimal, why not? 5.0, 5.0. And we're told that the area inside, okay, in other words, 5 times 5, which is 25, is equal to this right here. Okay. So in other words, what we're saying is this area, algebraically, must be equal to 25. Okay? It has to be. All right? And where did the 25 come from? Well, length times width. 5 times 5 is 25, which must be equal to this. Well, how can we solve for x now? Okay. Well, so far, all of this factoring that we've been doing is just, well, to see how we can write polynomials in different ways. But now we're actually going to use that to solve a problem. This is an equation. Before, we've been dealing with expressions. So we'd have x squared minus 6x plus 9 not equal to anything, and then you would just factor it. But now we actually have it equal to a number, and we need to solve for x. But because of this x squared here and the x, we can't use the traditional method of isolating x and getting it by itself. Right? It's not going to work because you have an x squared here and an x here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract 25 from both sides. Okay? So I will have x squared minus 6x and 9 take away 25 is negative 16 and this would be equal to 0 because 25 minus 25 is 0. All right, so now I'm going to factor this left-hand side, but just remember it's set equal to something on the right, in this case 0. So I can't drop that equal sign. So to factor the left, I need two numbers that multiply to negative 16, but add to give me negative 6. For that, I need negative 8 and positive 2. So this gives me x minus 8 times x plus 2, but that, of course, is still equal to 0. Well, how on earth can we figure out what x is now that this is factored? Well, if you notice what I have, I have a product of two numbers, x minus 8 and x plus 2, multiplied together to give 0. Now, in mathematics, you should know that the only way numbers can multiply to give you an answer of 0 is when one of those numbers is already 0. So either x minus 8 is 0 or x plus 2 is 0. Okay, so if either of these equals 0, well, 0 times anything is just 0. So here I have two equations that I can solve, hence there are two answers to my question. So I'm going to solve these two equations separately. So either x minus 8 is equal to 0, which means solving for x means that it's 8. So x could be 8. Or x plus 2 could be 0. That's the other possibility. Solving for x, I'm just isolating, x could be negative 2. Okay? So maybe this is the first time for you, but we have an equation with x's, and when we solved, there are actually two possible answers. So x could be 8, or x could be negative 2. Right? Because if you substitute either of those numbers in place of x, that's going to equal 25 which is the area of this square. FYI, this is called solving a quadratic equation, which you will see again in the future. Number two, use a difference of squares to evaluate 13 squared minus 7 squared. Right, well, 13 squared is 169 minus, and this would be 49, and you subtract them and you get an answer. But because it's, they are written as two squares, one subtracted from the other, I can factor them as follows. This would be the same as 13 plus 7 
times 13 minus 7. But these are numbers, so I can work that out. That's 20 times, and this would be 6. Now, 20 times 6, that's really easy to do in your head. That's just 120. Okay? So, 169 minus 49 is 120. Okay? And I just used a difference of squares. Let's try another one. 19 squared minus 11 squared. Suppose you don't know what 19 squared is. You don't have a calculator, and maybe you don't feel like working it out the long way. I don't know. Well, this is a difference of squares. So I can write that as 19 plus 11 times 19 minus 11. Okay, so 19 plus 11 is 30. 19 minus 11 is 8. Okay, well, 3 times 8 is 24, so 30 times 8 would be 240. Okay, and you could check with a calculator. 19 to the power of 2 minus 11 squared, you get 240. So it's possible to use a difference of squares, well, to do some basic arithmetic. It's kind of fun. Lastly, two concentric circles, concentric just means uh, their centers are aligned, have a radii r and r plus 3. So obviously, the smaller circle has a radius r, the larger one is 3 units bigger, hence r plus 3. Determine a completely factored expression for the area of the shaded region. Okay. Well, all we need to do is find the area of the big circle, subtract the area of the smaller circle, and whatever is left over, of course, is going to give us the gray. All we have to do with that expression is write it in its factored form completely. All right? Really, this isn't too difficult. But let's start. All right. So the area of the shaded region, so I'll just call that S, would be pi times the radius of the big circle, so I need brackets, this is r plus 3 squared minus pi times the radius of the little circle, that's just r. Okay? So, in fact, really, that's it. That's my expression. All I want to do is factor it. Okay? So, I'm going to factor out a pi. Now, because I already have some round brackets here, I'm going to create a square set just so I don't get them mixed up. So this is r plus 3 squared minus r squared. Okay. Now, you may think, oh, should I FOIL this out? Okay, well, you don't need to because, believe it or not, this is a difference of squares. I have something squared minus something else squared, and we know how to factor those. So let's do that. So that's going to give me pi bracket, and I'll keep this bracket. So this is going to be r plus 3 plus this r times the r plus 3 minus r. Okay, so I'm just treating this r plus 3. That's like my a, and the r is like my b, so a squared minus b squared. Right? Well, with these brackets, I don't need them anymore. So I'm just going to drop them, okay? Because r plus 3 um, plus r, that's just 2r plus 3, okay? And here I have r plus 3 minus r. Well, the r's cancel, so I'm actually just left with 3. Okay. So I'm going to put the 3 in the front. So my final answer in factored form is 3 pi, and I'm going to go back to rounded brackets, 2r plus 3. 3. So whatever r is, if you were to pick a number, okay, this expression here would give you the area of this shaded region, and this is in factored form.